Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Mindset Nebula podcast. Uh, today, we will be talking about uh, SAP careers and uh, SAP job market. Uh, with me today, I have a multitude of hosts and honorable guests. Uh, John Bragg is um, is, my, is our veteran host of uh, Mindset Nebula podcast. Please hey, say hi, John. <laughs> hey, Lily. Hi, everyone. Hello, and the uh, second time with us, we have Libby Kessler and uh, Austin Kessler, who we found out in our previous podcast are not related at all, but just happen to have the same last name. Please uh, say hi, Libby and Austin. Hello. Hey, everyone. Good to be back. Awesome. Glad to have you back, guys. And um, we have first time, time I believe, with us is uh, Mega Shri from uh, Mindset India. Please say hi, Mega. Hello, everyone. Happy to be here. Excellent. So let's let's just dive in into this very interesting subject. So SAP job market, SAP careers. We did have a podcast before with Libby and Austin. Uh, so maybe let's let's just see if if you have observed any let's say changes or maybe shifts in situation since since the last time we talked, like few few months ago. Um, Libby or Austin, would you would you like to talk about that? Uh, sure. Um, so typically, typically what we see in this over the summer in the SAP job market is a bit of a slowdown for mindset, at least this summer, that was not the case. We were, we were quite busy. We saw a lot of roles in the market. We had, we had a lot of positions both internally here at mindset and a lot of opportunities with our clients. Uh, typically we see October as one of our busiest times. Uh, and we we will see if that is the case uh, this year. Uh, right now we're in a bit of a lull, but typically, like I say, October is quite busy. Yeah. What do you think, Austin? <laughs> I agree with that, Libby. Um, historically, October has been one of our busiest months for SAP hiring. Uh, whether it's, you know, managers looking to hire that one last person before the year or, you know, use up the rest of their budget. Um, you know, we found uh, that we have a high number of uh, opportunities um, in the month of October, May spill into November, and then, of course, December with everyone out and, and enjoying the holidays. That's when when hiring uh, slows down a little bit. So, yeah, I agree with with Libby there. And then uh, what we're seeing here, a little bit of a change with, you know, pandemic still kind of in the background there, but uh, people are slowly returning back to, to their normal lives. Uh, we're seeing, what I'm seeing is, is hiring has increased a little bit, but what managers are looking for is people to be more and more on site. Um, and um, that's a big know, change. <laughs> you need people to travel. And, uh, you know, there's some companies going to the hybrid approach where they're saying, okay, we've seen that uh, consultants or full-time employees can work remotely and get the job done. But then there's also those companies think, saying, hey, let's go back to the way things were and have people on site here uh, for half the time there. So you've got companies responding now, um, having people on site 100% time, uh, hybrid uh, amount of time, and then also some companies that have adapted to the new way of working and, and having um, employees working remotely. So it's an interesting dynamic there of how companies have responded to, to the pandemic here at mm. this time. Yeah, I, I think it, we definitely might want to come back to remote, hybrid, uh, mm -hmm. different um, work location arrangements right after that. But I, I would like to hear from Mega, what's what's the situation in India? How is uh, how is SAP market? Uh, Elena, I think in India, even during COVID times, I think it's funny, but even during COVID times, I didn't see the demand coming down for SAP developers. Mm -hmm. You know, I just see it increasing and increasing. Uh, Probably there's more demand for SAP developers I have seen in the pandemic. Everyone uh, thought probably it would hit recession during that time, but I didn't see that happening with people with SAP skills. I think during this time, they got better job, better hike, you know, uh, wow. people found, a lot of people found their dream job during this time. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, please. Uh, so I don't think 
it really impacted much here because it made it more convenient. Everyone can start working from home. They can take a lot of interviews working from home. It, it's not like, you know, they need to go back to office to take up interviews. You, you just go attend one interview. You can just sit at home and in a day, crack two to three interviews easily. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm curious, as far as uh, location of actual work in India, has there been um, maybe, like, like Austin mentioned, uh, more of going back to the office trend or um, is, is working from home still kind of prevalent mode of operation? Uh, I think now people have gotten to their comfort zone, Elena. You know, no one wants to come back to office. It's 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 like probably we are not giving them that opportunity to work from home. They just want to shop around or go around and look for another organization, which would probably give them that opportunity to work from home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's, I feel it's definitely becoming um, kind of one of the perks or even sometimes requirements for people to, to have this opportunity. But um, interesting thing I've noticed, I was just casually browsing kind of LinkedIn to prepare for this conversation. And um, comparing to the years before COVID, um, because I think remote work for SAP, I wouldn't say it was non-existent, but it was very, very, very low percent. Most of the job ads, for example, if I wanted to find another job, it, it would need to be local one where I live. It would be very low chance of me getting work in another state without me having to relocate my family there. And that was actually kind, kind of a huge, huge bummer for many, I think, SAP workers because SAP is um, still somewhat niche skill. And um, depending on what companies are in your area, it might be difficult to, to find jobs. But what I'm seeing right now, it's it's almost complete opposite. Like so many remote opportunities, so many, like we don't care where you are, just, just come and do, do the job. So it's interesting. But at the same time, Austin, as you mentioned, I feel some companies, and maybe you can speak more about which industries yeah. may be more affected by it, um, try, trying to at least partially bring people more to the office. So do you think there is some maybe industry-related trends in that? I, I don't think necessarily related to, to industry. Um, no. I don't think that that is the case. Uh, I think you just have uh, leadership has different views on uh, workers being in seats or uh, if they need, you know, they can work remotely, just whatever they're comfortable with. And so I think that's a decision just that leadership makes and doesn't necessarily tied to a certain industry. Um, but uh, I would say it's interesting talking to consultants, full-time employees that are now being asked to come back into the office. Some of them, you know, even before the pandemic, uh, were road warriors, right? They uh, were traveling Monday through Thursday, Monday through Friday every week. And some of them are ready to get back to traveling. That's just what they're used to. That's what they like to do is take that flight Sunday uh, night or uh, Monday morning and then return uh, Thursday afternoon there. Um, and then, um, you know, you've got others that, were road warriors, but then they got comfortable working remote. And now it's just like, you know what, this is the new norm for me. I am just now looking for remote jobs. And if you don't have a remote opportunity for them, you know, with how hot the SAP market is, they're just going to wait yeah. for that new, that remote SAP opportunity. <laughs> right. Um, and then you got Absolutely. others that like the hybrid approach here and they like to go on site a couple of days a week, um, you know, meet with the team and, 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 uh, have that inter, you know, face-to-face -face interaction with people, but then the rest of the time they like to plug away from home and, and get their work done. Right. So it's interesting to see how people have reacted now that companies are asking, um, employees to come back to the office. So. And workers still have, they, like you said, Austin, workers do still have a lot of choices. So if they are only looking for remote, they can absolutely find it. So companies that are really sticking to their guns on needing somebody to be on site or needing somebody to travel, um, maybe potentially missing out on really great talent, but because they have, they have the choice, they can, they can really decide if, if remote is really the only thing they'll consider. <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's it's all about the choices, J John. You you're an experienced, I, I I believe, consultant. So maybe did did your time in road worrying and uh, <laughs> yeah. What, what what are your thoughts about that? I, I uh, no, that's true. I, I was uh, plenty of time doing the exactly what Austin said that uh, 
sent a shockwave through my brain of yeah the the Monday morning six a.m. flight and the the Thursday is as late out as you can as you can get to get back to your family and such and I think yeah there's there's a huge portion of folks that now that you know obviously we're doing this over Zoom there's there's so many things that happen really well with technology people trust it now it's almost like the the pandemic really forced that forced people to know that this technology is out there and it works for them and uh, yeah with that choice and. You know, it's it's all up to the person whether they they really love that day and day interaction with with a with a customer team and client team. That's that's great, and and that's out there, and people are coming back and doing that. For others that that really are comfortable in in a work from home, work remote scenario, and and like like making sure you know you can do the 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 kiddo pickup or anything like that while while you're home is is really really good. So I don't know. I was I was almost curious too on a. I don't know if it's more more cultural or regional. You know, we've seen and and we talk about this internally a lot. Our um, our in person marketing events are are just a little bit a little bit down year over year. So uh, the normal ASUGs and Sapphire and TechEd this year are really just a ton smaller in the U.S. Mm-hmm. But when I reach out to to some of the colleagues that we work with or other other partners um, like within within the App House network, they say. Europe is is back. Like people want to go in, they want to get together, they want to go to happy hour, they they want to make sure that connection is really strong and back. And and Meg, I don't know if this is what you see in in India as well a little bit, but it just seemed like depending on the regions, it felt like there was there was this comfort level, you know, in between you know what countries you're working with or what area, and maybe the U.S. just isn't quite quite there yet. Um, Mega, do you do you want to talk about some events, SAP related events in India? Uh, definitely, Elena. I think uh, we ourselves uh, are uh, hosting a lot of events uh, in Mindset mm-hmm. India at the moment. We uh, did have uh, two guest speakers, uh, visitors, and you know, uh, give a talk on SAP and BTP as well. So I think. Uh, and we have lots, uh, many coming up in the coming uh, months. Uh, we have a lot of plans for that. So, and I think also the comp- employees are enjoying those sessions. Uh, you know, they find it very uh-huh. informative. Uh, there's a lot of Q&A going on uh, during those sessions. Uh, so I think that's really nice to see uh, all these things happening when people are back to office, you know. It, it's really nice. It, it makes uh-huh. the environment more lively and everyone enjoys it. Do you, do you find that those those events are what's driving people to the office? Uh, definitely, because, you know, every single candidate whom I interview always tells me, you know, we are eager to learn, you know, we are very eager to learn new skills. We want to upgrade. The reason we are joining Mindset is Mindset works on the latest technologies. So uh, that should, if they are that eager to learn, I think that should definitely drive them to work. At least, as Austin mm-hmm. said, a hybrid model, at least, you know, people are willing to because every single candidate whom I take up uh, the HR discussion, uh, that that's always one of my questions. Uh, what are your thoughts on work from home and work from office? Uh, and most of them, I see that now, you know, after staying at home for so long, they're like, I think hybrid model is good. You know, uh, we get to interact with people. We get to, inter- uh, you know, uh, build those conversation, uh, exchange of knowledge and all this really helps. Uh, uh, so everyone really is willing to work in a hybrid model now. Hmm. Interesting. So I guess uh, no to both uh, potential candidates and potential employers that everyone has choices these days. <laughs> and uh, whatever, if you want to hire someone faster, maybe offer them more choices. So that that seems to seems to make sense. But if you are looking for a job in whatever mode you are interested in, seems like it's it's a great great time to be on the market. So switching to um, another subject that I wanted to chat with you all about it's uh, uh, resumes or CVs as they're called in some countries. It's um, obviously description of themselves, kind of a pitch sales pitch, if you will, of the of the candidate that they're typically submitting when they're applying for the new job. Um, uh, so there was a viral video that was <laughs> making rounds on on uh, Twitter, other social media. It was, I believe, a recruiter from Google. She uh, shared some some of the tips. Uh, I think some of them were maybe valid, um, such as making your resume more targeted to a specific position. Some were 
to me were just pretty weird and I'm not sure if it's just specific to her job. Like she was saying, do not put your full address, just put your state um, and just general location. To me, it, it was like more like potato, potato. It's not difficult to, for me to just disregard unnecessary information. So so for the, let's say for the candidates that are looking to apply for jobs right now, many of whom may not have been in the market for a while, uh, what what advice you would give to them with regards to their to their resume or CV preparation? Sure, I did. Um, I did see that video. It came up on my for you page on TikTok. So, um, <laughs> I I think um, the the things that I want to see in in a strong resume is I do like to see targeted information towards the job that they are applying for or hoping for. Um, one of the tips that that recruiter gave was no objective statement. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm okay with no objective statement if your resume is, if the content of your resume is speaking for itself and it makes sense why you are applying towards for this, say SAP mm -hmm. SD position because you've, because all of your experience is SAP yeah. SD. <laughs> excuse me, but if you are looking to make a change, I think an objective statement is an okay thing because you can explain um, kind of how your experience relates to a different area that you're trying to get into. So for that reason, objective statements make sense in some occasions, not in others. Um, I think we like to see a, a clean format when you look at a resume, even without, without even reading the content, it shouldn't look like a mess. <laughs> no. um, clean formatting, um, correct grammar uh, and spelling is important. Um, those are things that candidates do get called out for by, by hiring managers. Uh, and I don't think you need to have a 15 page resume. We do see them, <laughs> yeah. but you can, you I agree can completely. down. <laughs> I think John has a 20 page resume, right, John? Uh, you yeah. Just done it out. Done it I don't know why I haven't heard back. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you can edit, you can pare down. We don't need to see your first job out of college. If that was a long time ago, if it wasn't a long time ago, great, include it. But Try to pare down your resume to still be in chronologic chronological order, but uh, keep it with mostly related experience if possible. <laughs> yeah, I think I completely agree with Libby. A chronological resume is what we are looking for. Uh, probably, I think that's one of the best format a rec or I can say it's recruiter's favorite format because this type of resumes focuses on the work history, the professional achievements, and also their skills. And again, it will have whether they're a beginner, they're experts or advanced in those skills. These things would make it easy for us to find and target what we are looking for in the CV. And also recently, uh, something interesting that I came across while reviewing one of the CVs was uh, after every professional experience, I saw something called as reason for change mentioned in bold, which very clearly said why the person was looking for change after every job. You know, probably uh, in India, a step I sometimes we reject on a lot of potential candidates just because of the stability. Uh, so probably when we see the reason there, it encourages us to shortlist that CV. And when it sounds genuine, we make an effort to interact with them and understand why. So I think that reason for change did stand out for me. And I would like to hear how, you know, what are your thoughts? I, th I think it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It might be something, um, I guess, in, in the specialties or maybe in regions where there is a tendency to just rotate jobs and sometimes I mean for a variety of reasons in in the US this this question sometimes can be I think it's it's a it's very kind of tricky territory so it can be appropriate or it can be 
just rather rather inappropriate maybe because in the u.s people can take let's let's say extend the time off to care for someone in the family they might not be comfortable talking about it and for example i was asked just to be honest completely silly questions like i had a i had a gap like gap was one month in my resume i left one job in let's say september started another job in october and then manager decided to kind of grill me on way wise and that was honestly the only the only gap there and i just pointed pointed to her that did you not notice that one job was in one state and another job was in another state so for the whole month pardon me for being preoccupied with with my relocation with you know year old in child and you know my whole family and cat and everything so sorry i wasn't in prison or anything but <laughs> just I was just just moving so all right so yeah, yeah I, but but i'm curious yeah leave if for, from you the, the u.s perspective i was just gonna say i don't i don't consider one month a gap <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so some uh, people do i guess <laughs> yeah apparently um u.s perspective on on what exactly on uh, people explaining the reasons for job changes, mm. uh, would it be kind of interesting for you to know? Would it influence your decision to, let's say, shortlist a candidate? Yeah, I think if if someone has done, I, I have seen that on a few resumes. I don't, I don't, I haven't seen it on many. Uh, but if somebody does have a lot of jumping around, it might be interesting to have an explanation around that. Mm. If if durations are, you know, two, three years here, four years here, two years here, I don't think I would need that. Um, but if you are going from place to place to place in a short amount of yeah. time, I would be more interested in understanding that. Agree. I agree. What do you think, Austin? Yeah, I I think with with gaps there, uh, if you do have a gap and you have a, your reasons for not being able to work at the time, it's always good to be honest and upfront. Um, and if for, you know a recruiter is going to ask you about that, right? And so it's always good to be just honest with them and let them know uh, the reason. Uh, when it comes to short term employments, you know sometimes I've seen consultants they you know so happen to get opportunities that are three months or six months, and then that's it, right? That's go live, hybrid um, care, boom, the contract is done, right? So, you know, a, a good recruiter will ask them, you know, why was, what happened at the three month uh, uh, timeline there, six months, what happened at the end? But uh, I agree with Libby. Typically, we like to see that longevity, uh, whether you're a, cons a consultant or full-time, and uh, it is a red flag if we see people who continue to skip around and, and leave jobs before a year, move on to the next opportunity. And there's a pattern there for the past, let's say five or seven years. And so what we'd like to see and what will help us and determine um, who to, you know, who we want to move for work with and move forward with is someone who can stick around for longer than a year and is able to stick and, and, uh, be at a job for a year instead of always looking for the next thing there. So, yeah. yeah. I do think I do think it is important if it is a contract role or you have been contracting, mm -hmm. include contract in your yeah. resume. So yeah, I'm just gonna say yeah. I, I've seen this on some resumes. If you are just consultant with some company, it's much easier for me to understand when I see okay, I was a consultant and here are my projects. Yeah. They are not like full time jobs that I suddenly left after three months. So. Exactly. Yeah, please, John. You want John? You want to say something? No, it even helps. I was going to ask you, Helena, as well. You know, even helps as a technical interviewer of folks because I know, you know, SAP technologies change in three months, six months, mm -hmm. one year. So we're always looking back. You know, maybe the last what three jobs, maybe max. You know, yeah. on a resume, yeah, especially those old, fifteen yeah. pagers. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> but when when you're asking those questions, you know, those are the most relevant things that people are working on right now, and the projects that we have, and what's going on. You know, especially in the you know, like like you said, Mega, um, the the areas that we're working in, the net new technologies of SAP. A lot of the times, we're looking for that latest and greatest experience, and so a chronologically makes one hundred percent sense. B you know, being able to talk about something like a BTP or S4 in your area of expertise is very important. If we don't see that in the first, you know, one to maybe three jobs within the past one to three years, that that kind of 
you know, raises probably a few more questions from us. Interesting. So, so to wrap up, let's say <laughs> resume subject, I guess uh, the lessons learned for potential candidates would be first of all keep it keep it on point. Um, so keep it reasonably short. We definitely don't need like fifteen pages. And to be honest, no one just reads this. It, we we just we just don't. No one has time for that. Um, and um, so, if you have anything that you want to disclose additional that you think would uh, would make you better candidates, then I would just say go ahead and do it. Like Mega said, if it's customary. Uh, to disclose, like, why are you change? Why were you changing the jobs? Just by all means, go ahead and do it. If you want to know it, why do you want to change your careers to something different, then I think it's reasonable to put in there too. But I I want to highlight once again, as Libby said, having clean formatting and um, correct spelling. I think it's extremely helpful. It sh it shows you in a very professional way, because um, uh, many many resumes I've seen, unfortunately, they are very kind of like a daisical when it comes to spelling and grammar. And I'm, you know, I'm not a you know native English speaker myself, so I can definitely understand. But folks, like seriously, don't spell like Odata in five different ways on the same resume on top of that. So please, please check your spelling when, whenever you can do the best. All right. So sorry, I wanted to make sure that we cover this very exciting subject of uh, hot topics and hot skills again and, and i think john wanted to talk to us about some some of the btp stuff so so what's going on in btp world john <laughs> um, it's it's just you know what what do we hear the most about from sap at any given time is <laughs> is basically yeah. where the topics seem to go right so the two the two keys that i've heard over and over again this year is you know rise with sap which is your your s4 hana transformation from ecc and there's multiple different ways to do that <laughs> um, and then yeah. the, the second one is is sap btp and the the btp topic has gotten more and more traction over the year i would say and um, just just to throw a couple things out there that i hear from a from our customers and b from from folks really looking to build up their skills in in that area um, anything having to do with automation is is huge it's a huge topic for all of our customers especially as we look at the at the market you know everybody's going to want to start doing more with less you know um, when we when we get into to some of the market forces that are being driven right now so uh, that kind of goes into the the IRPA modes of okay what can I do with some some bots out there or what can I do with process automation so those are two really mm -hmm. key things in BTP that that people are very interested in. Um, the the third one that we hear quite a bit is uh, cloud workflow. So workflow has always been kind of a uh, a bane of a, a backend ECC environment. <laughs> Anybody that's worked on workflow yep. then can raise their hand and go, "That was that was terrible." <laughs> um, no, nobody but, wants to work with workflow. <laughs> yes. So hey, hot skill, <laughs> um, or hot hot in demand topic. <laughs> but um, the the cloud workflow engine is actually a, a fairly simple thing to use and and set up for a lot of different parts in SAP. And so that's another really um, uh, a big topic that I hear from customers within the BTP space wanting to to look at those things. But yeah, I just mm -hmm. wanted to kind of throw up like, what are the top things that we're hearing from folks? And uh, obviously Fiori is still huge, you know, being able to host apps on a cloud launch pad, doing all of your app dev out in the cloud. Those are topics that aren't going to go away um, and only going to get stronger over time with, with how people want to deploy, how people want to move forward. You know, we want a clean core system and that's that's becoming a bigger a bigger talking point um, these days as well. Mm. So, where we can we can move people in that direction and move those skills to say, hey, I I can work in CapM or I can work with the RAP model and I can see how we do end to end app dev, front end, back end, etc. Uh, in the cloud, the the better off you're going to be long term. Yeah, interesting. So, so let's let's say, Meg, I would like to start with you. What are what are the hot skills currently in the India SAP job market? Elena, I think in the Indian SAP job market, the hot skill is uh, S four Hana. I think mm. I, I think that's and BTP. I think these are the two skills that's ruling the market. We can also add in wrap to it about wrap. I think. Mm -hmm. the, 
ki skill sets are really on top like you know like there's so much of requirement everyone wants to work on it everyone wants to work on uh, people want to join companies who are working on these latest technologies uh, so everyone is very eager to learn in india no yeah, i can say from development perspective i think about prep models definitely um must know these days you you might not have practical experience with it especially if you're trying uh, looking for a job change but mm -hmm. the developers who even haven't heard about this and we unfortunately met some of them i would say probably have very low chances of getting employment uh, pretty much anywhere these days uh Libby and Austin, what what are what are the hot 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 skills in the us okay. market well, I'm seeing an increasing demand for EWM um, right now um, uh -huh. with some of the companies we're working with uh, sort of looking to implement EWM um, or it might be just a one off staff org that they need an EWM resource to help them out with the project there. Uh, I can't connect with enough EWM consultants. Um, and so, um, you know, we've we've had success with EWM implementations here in the past at Mindset. We've got a great pipeline, but uh, I'm seeing companies more and more look into either implementing or enhancing their EWM or looking to do whatever type of project in e EWM space there. So, mm. Interesting. Libby, anything to, to add? Uh, just from just from an internal full-time mindset perspective, mm -hmm. um, we are... We're always looking for really strong principal consultants. So someone yeah. who has a very, a very solid SAP background, someone who has managed programs, someone who has an entrepreneurial drive and can communicate and be very client facing. Those yeah. are some of the things that we're looking for in, in that role. But we, we could always use some, some more folks with those types of skills. Yeah, definitely. I think um, yeah, someone at kind of higher level, having very broad um, experience and great communication skills, uh, very very important. Um, definitely, always in demand in SAP world. Interesting. Absolutely. So I want to we yeah we will wrap we will be wrapping up soon. Um, the last item I want to cover: uh, any advice for those looking for a either career change from non-SAP to SAP world, or maybe those who are looking to maybe step up into slightly different role? And I know John and I we have interviewed quite a few developers who were looking to move more into architect position. So, any advice to those folks from you? Make it. I, mean, I would take say get a video and post it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> No. I was going to say, get in touch with us. <laughs> get in <laughs> touch with um, a mindset recruiter, for sure. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice speech, Libby. <laughs> um, I would say for someone looking to get an SAP that hasn't had the SAP experience, look for those uh, companies that have large implementations going on. Um, sometimes they like to hire people who don't have SAP experience to help out on some of the activities that um, you know, functional SMEs or technical leads don't have the time or, um, you know, don't necessarily need to, um, to be able to do. And so if you can uh, talk to a company about how you can add value to some of these large S4 implementations, uh, get in there as maybe a junior project coordinator or um, a junior BA or um, associate level developer, and uh, really prove your value um, during this implementation, that's a good way of, of uh, getting that SAP experience. We work with a number of companies where that's going on. They have large implementations and they need people kind of more on the ground level to help them out with a number of activities that go on during these implementations here. So um, yeah, I would say that's that's my advice to someone that uh, is looking to get into SAP. Wow. And then for someone maybe wanting to add on to the responsibility or move into a different area of SAP. If you're already in SAP area, um, don't be afraid to take on new challenges, uh, ask for more work or ask for that work that's outside of your job, uh, you know, your responsibilities um, and, and just uh, be prepared to learn um, and uh, try to pick it up and, and prove to your manager that you're able to uh, not only do your role, but also, potentially move into this other space here and help them out with these um, 
other uh, tasks that are, are mm. going on there. And so uh, with that, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of training materials that are available. Um, you know, we have great uh, webinars uh, here at Mindset, able to speak to a number of topics that you can tune into and learn if you're interested in, in a number of areas like Fiori and, and other uh, PT, B2P and, and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that would be my advice to people looking to get into other areas there. Yeah, I think yeah, great, great idea. Just doing join online events or yeah, many, many going on. Very, very easy to do these days. Everything yeah. online. Uh, Mega, any any words from you on this? Uh, yes, Elena. I think I completely agree with Austin. You know, there are a lot of events we do at Mindset. We have our podcast, we have our Nebula, and we also mm. have this BTP bites. You know, uh, that we are running now, and I think I really see good response it can be on linkedin or on youtube uh so i think people should definitely uh join more such events as libby said you just need to contact us <laughs> and also i think even for those it's always important to upgrade our skills our existing skills so try mm -hmm. to be on top of the a game you know upgrade your skills learn try to make an effort to learn new and the latest skills that we have in the market you know uh, take up some sap certifications probably and you will definitely be there excellent yeah good advice uh, J john any advice from you how to become the next uh, the next john bragg <laughs> <laughs> that's that's way easier than you think <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> the no just backing up a second i would say anyone looking for a career change you know and it, don't discount the skills that you have right sap mm -hmm. at the end of the day is just an it system if you worked in oracle or salesforce or aws you know any infrastructure or any it area don't discount the the teams you may have led the the projects you've worked on uh at the end of the day all these things come together because there's teams there's projects there's people and those people work together to get something done together and so a lot of those skills are the same across the board it's just and that new technology possibly. So there's there's a huge benefit of, of doing anything in any of those areas over time. And, and everybody comes to the table with amazing experiences uh, throughout their careers. And um, you know, the the job of the resume and the cover letter is to to be able to showcase those and and convince someone that you know, you're willing to take a challenge. You're willing to take take a, an opportunity that will be really fun, rewarding and and um, will get you to that next level. Yeah, excellent. That's great, great advice. All right. Well, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us, uh, Mega, Libby, and uh, Austin and John. And thank yeah. you to our listeners. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye.